don't panic, I don't go into it. Well, hello everybody, it's uh, Suffolk Andy here at uh, Needham Lake. As you can see, it's a, well, it's not a big lake, but it's a, it's certainly a lake. And you've got all your ducks and seagulls and people milling around. It's uh, very cold here in Suffolk today. The wind is a blowing, but uh, we've got no rain, which makes a bloody change. Can I just say before I go on with this blog that today is a special day it's uh, the day that we remember all the fallen dead from the wars and current wars we've been fighting and uh, can I just say thank you for their sacrifice that they've done on our behalf and still are doing it on our behalf and that's all the three nations that uh, have took part in all the all the stupid wars sometimes against tyranny but anyway, that's Remembrance Sunday today. Right, as you can see, people have got their hats and coats on. The old Virago's over there. Uh, I shall fill you in in a minute what's been happening with the bikes. These two look quite happy having a prune. Hey. All right. That's Needham Lake. It's part of a... A system of a canal that runs from Itchreach to Bury St Edmunds, and because uh, it fell into decline when the uh, when steam came in, and it hasn't been used since, and it's all blocked up and weeded up and whatever. But this is just a little part of it. So anyway, I'm just going to have a ride through the Suffolk countryside. I've got no idea where we're going to go. Uh, I'll just pick a little side road off in the little town up here and see where we go. And uh, I'll fill you on on so much. Just get these gloves sorted. Bloody new gloves. Fucking nuisance. Right, let's get going. This little town we're going to go into is called uh, Needham Market. Hey, nice train going across there. To watch these little roads around here, they're crap as usual in Suffolk. Yeah, I'll go into this little town and uh, take a little road and we'll just see where we go. Right, where do I begin? I say to myself, what a friggin' week. I had no bikes for a whole week and even now I've only just got this one back. My ZZR is still in the main dealers in the uh, it's reached. They've had it now for coming up for two weeks. Phoned up the other day and they said, yes, we found out what's the matter with it. It's an electrical part. And uh, the bad news is, there's no part in Great Britain. Kawasaki do don't cover it. They don't keep it. So we're having a problem. But the good news is, we've uh, found a second hand part. So that should uh, sort your problem out. But it won't be ready till Monday or Tuesday this next week. So that's two weeks and they're the main dealers, the biggest dealers in East Anglia. Crap, but there you go. Well anyway, after I'd done the uh, other vid, I think it was last Sunday, I said that the Virago was not trustworthy. And uh, on the way back, she was spluttering and going ahead and I thought, my God, I'm not going to make it. I'm going to be stuck out here in the middle of nowhere. Anyway, we got back and she wouldn't start when I got her back. So we've got another little uh, motorbike place and it's really called Chris Self's. So I phoned the guy up, told him what to happen. He said, yeah, bring it down, boy, you know. We'll have a little look at it for you. So uh, I took it down on the Tuesday and yes, he said, I know what it'll probably be. There's two parts that could be electrical again. And uh, he got the part for me, fitted it all up, and got it back on the road, and he phoned me up yesterday, and I picked it up. So I'm now giving its first run out to see if she's uh, a good one. And she seems all right at the moment. So that's the state of play on the bikes. Been bikeless for a whole week. Been kicking me ass. Thinking to myself, fucking hell, man, you know. 
This is crazy. I've never been without a bike for so long, you know. Anyway, we're now back on a bike. A couple of things I'd like to say as well. Captain Cranky! Hey, mate. What a bike. What a lovely little bike. Very smart. Looked at that and thought, cool, I'd like to ride that, have a go on that. Bit jealous, really. But, uh, fantastic bike. And, uh, also... Mate, thanks for the uh, shout out you gave me on your couple of videos again. I haven't had time to reply because of uh, circumstances. But thank you much for that shout out from me and my son, Tackless Dribs. Good one, mate. Can win today. The other thing is, uh, tall guy, small bike. The McDonald Challenge. I chuckled like hell when I watched that one. It did make me laugh, mate. But it's brilliant. I'm trying to eat that uh, happy meal in one minute. I sat and watched that the other day and laughed the socks off. Very good. And there's been a couple of other vlogs on there that uh, I've enjoyed. And the one I was watching this morning, it's at the old fart on a bike. The old fart on a bike. I don't know who's the oldest fart on the bike, him or me. But uh, with his problem page. Well, that's quite novel. Quite a good idea. Could be quite funny. Some people send him in some bloody daft things to sort out their problems. I uh, think it would be funny. And Grave Digger. Unite Terrors, man! Were you sighing about it this morning? Made me I shouldn't laugh, mate. I really shouldn't laugh, but spiders and stuff like that jumping all over me. Oh my god. I could shit myself. But uh, you seem to be handling it quite well, mate. Grateful for you to put it on there, you know. <coughs> it's actually nice, you know, when people blog. You know, we don't, you know, we all say we're all friends, we're all bloggers, we're all doing the same thing and we're trying to interact with each other. But sometimes, you know, it is nice when uh, you actually get to know that person a little bit more. I know they always say you can't judge a, a man unless you've walked some miles in his shoes. But it is like nice to uh, see who they are and, uh, and understand them a bit better. I think that's right, you know, we've all got you know, our daily lives to run and all the crap what comes with that with bills and earning money and you know but uh, it's still nice to get away on the bike and find out a little bit more about that blogger you know so hopefully you know in the future I'll uh, be able to let you know a little bit more about myself you know not just about my riding a bike but uh, other things in my life the other thing is uh, I've been blogging now for, I think I'm coming up for my second month. I think it was seven weeks this week. So it'll be eight weeks next week. And I have gone over the 50 mark for subscribers. And can I actually say to every one of those, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. I really do. And uh, everybody who prescribes to me, I'll prescribe back. And I can assure them that... Uh, Every video they put on there, I will watch. And I will watch them. And I enjoy them. Let's get through here. Look at that, look. <laughs> Live forever on that bike. Let's go to Combs, whatever that is. I've no idea. As you know, I'm crap running around and getting lost and whatever we go up here see where it takes us yeah so thank you very much for all those people who uh, subscribe to my channel fucking hell man fucking huge bumps <coughs> yeah I do watch all your channels usually I have to get up very early in the morning and uh, I usually have about an hour 
before I uh, have to go off or whatever and I sit there with my old big mug of coffee and I see who's put their new blogs up and I go through them. Um, I did say in an, uh, a blog I'd done the other day, I'm not the best at replying. It's not because um, I don't want to, but I will tell you because uh, Grave Digger made a confession, I am very dyslexic and uh, it's a bit of a pain but uh, I still enjoy them all and uh, if I can put a small reply I will and if I need to put a big reply I get my stepdaughter Amy to uh, fill it in for me so there you go thank you everybody I thought I'd just uh, I always tell a story or something you know I don't want to be serious today because I think the last few blogs I done quite serious. Where are we? Park Road. So I thought, I thought I'll keep a bit lighter today because that's my first blog in a, over a week or about a week. So I'm going to tell you a story. Well, this little story happened to me. I don't know about 1980 something, 85, <coughs> when I first start touring Europe on a bike. And uh, I decided that, you know, I'd been down to Greece and different places, decided to go to Italy. Italy seems like a beautiful country, and it is, it's lovely. And uh, went off to Italy. Well, in them days, you, you know, we, we were young and we camped. And don't go on about camping, because I've done a, a bit on uh, camping and took the piss. But in them days, yes, confession, I used to camp. So... <laughs> Uh, I did. So anyway, yeah, so I went down to Italy and we were camping. Now what I used to like to do, whoa, what I used to like to do is um, not go to the most touristy places, go to where the locals go, get to know the locals, get in there, you know, find out what the culture was like and snail around, you know, good stuff. So anyway, stopped at this campsite. I think it was the other side of Rome just gone through Rome and gone down to Sorrento and thought alright we've got to camp up here for the night so we camped up and it was a small camp so you know it was very basic in them days with a communal you know shit ace block and whatever and a little shop and, uh, and a little bar so we camped up in a tea and we said oh we might as well go over to the little bar see what's going on have a beer you know we had a long old drive so we went over there and it was bloody packed, it wasn't a, a small, it was quite small, but it was quite packed, full of Italians, there's no British or anything here, we were out of the way, you know, we are off the beaten track, it's where these chaps and ladies went, you know. So we were sitting there, get ourselves a beer, and we are all sitting there, and R and R goes past, and we're sitting there, and all of a sudden, there's a commotion in the room, they all started freaking panicking, I thought that was... I thought that was the Second World War again. I thought they were running away. No, they're all panicking and running and running around the place. And we're like, what the hell's going on? Anyway, they start running out the door. And in the end, that just left me, my girlfriend, and my mate and his girlfriend, and the barman. And he looked really worried. But anyway, I looked up at the ceiling. We heard this buzzing. And there was this frigging insect. It was huge, and it had big, bulbous, aluminous eyes, and this horrible buzz to it. Well, the barman then got this big, huge broom and started to beat the friggin' thing with it. Go, you know, and we go, what's going on? He says, very dangerous, you know, very dangerous. You know, bite, oh, no good, you know. So then I killed the bloody thing. None of them came back. They all stayed out. We stayed there for a couple more hours, got a bit fucking pissed up, you know, as you do when you're on holiday. And uh, anyway, went back to the tent, didn't think anything of it. Whoa, halfway through the night, Suffolk Andy wanted a friggin' dump. And I thought, oh shit, you know, if that was just a fucking Jimmy Riddle, I could just go out there and, you know, eight side of ten. But I wanted a friggin' dump. And this was like four o'clock in the morning. So I got myself out of my sleeping bag, I got my little tiny torch, and off I went to the friggin' communal toilet block, you know. 
and it was as dark as hell. We were in the middle of nowhere. It's dark as hell. And I had my little torch, you need know, that big torch, you can't take much on a bike. A little tiny torch. When I got to the communal crapper, all the lights were out. There weren't no lights on, they must turn them off at night or something. I couldn't find a bloody switch or anything like that. So anyway, in I go with my little tiny torch, find myself a nice poo to get, you know, to sit on, get myself ready for the action. So I'm sitting there, and they're starting to uh, get into it, and the next thing I hear is friggin' buzzing, and it's pitch dark black, only my little torch. And anyway, I looked up, and over the top of the bloody toilet door came these two friggin' illuminous eyes friggin' huge and it just landed there with these huge great wings and it just looked at me and it was like it was looking at me saying fuck you I'm gonna have you boy you know well I'll tell you what I have never run so fast with my friggin' trousers around my ankles I'll tell you I was up out that door and gone zipped up tent fuck it shit me up I'll tell you so that's my little insect story from uh, from uh, Italy. So anyway, we're going, going out this way. I'm not going to make this vlog too long today because uh, it's bloody freezing. I've got these new gloves on. And I can honestly say my uh, hands are a bit cold. I've been spoiled, you see, because on the ZZR I've got heated grips. On this old Virago, no heated grips. And it is quite cold today. Which way should we go? Patterson Church? Let's see where we go. Fucking get them sorted out, boy. Yeah, so, once again, thank you for everybody who subscribed. I'm quite chuffed. Um, oh, going on about this new thing with, uh, with this answering to replies and stuff. What the hell's going on? What's YouTube done? You know, I'm not sort of brilliantly up with uh, computers and stuff like that. But that seems to me, it's just knackered it right over. You know, some of you more experienced bloggers have been on there, you know, saying how, it, how bad it is and everything else. But it seems to me, as you know, like Facebook, a Google Plus was supposed to be a a threat to Facebook, a, a rival, but that's never took off. You know, people are not changing with Facebook, they're uh, staying on it. So I think what's happened is there, that uh, to bolster Google Plus up, I think they've hit YouTube, <coughs> which I think they own, I'm not sure, but I think they own YouTube, and transferred us lot over to the Plus site which then makes it look bloody good because millions and millions of people oh, little church quaint little place you can see, I'll see if I can get round the front a bit so I can show you I know some of you boys and girls like the old uh, like the old scenery and stuff it's a quaint old place nice little church some of the churches you can actually get into, some of them they're left open, but one or two they have to close up because you get knobs, you go in there and nick stuff and vandalise them, even in the country, you know. But majority of churches in Suffolk you can get into, but there's one or two you can't. So, there you go, a nice little church. Yeah, so I think what they've done is uh, made us all go over to Google Plus. You know, if you remember, you think of all the millions of people who blog and look and watch YouTube, if you can get that lot over, you're laughing. But the trouble is, they haven't given any thought, you know, to our expectations and how we want to be. You know, they haven't given it a thought at all. They're just thinking about themselves, which is pretty sort of usual in this world. Get that lot, that's a lovely bit of scenery. 
So I think that's what they've done. They haven't given it any thought. Well, the point is I've seen one or two uh, guys saying, well, there's other sites, let's try other sites. But I was listening to one uh, guy this morning, is it Phil 800 or something? Sorry, mate, if I got it wrong. Terrible with names. But you're saying you're going to try and try a couple more sites, put some videos on there. But you're not sure if that's the answer or not, you know? I don't think it is, actually. I think we've got to keep complaining to uh, Google and YouTube. And maybe they might rescind, but I don't think so. I don't I think they will. But uh, I think at the end of the day, we will get used to it, as they say. But I know one or two of the, the real big bloggers have made some complaints. Anyway, the other thing with that is... You know, everything now, if somebody replies to something I've put on there or, or something else, it comes through to my bloody phone. Well, the point is, we're all in different time zones. <coughs> so the other night, I'm in bed. Last night, you know, I've been working till ooh, two o'clock in the morning, I was working behind a bar and um, got home, got into bed, and my phone started ringing, or making a noise, you know, for me, uh, for me inbox. This one of you boys had put a comment, not your fault, you can't help it, but you're in a different time zone. So they haven't thought of that one either, you know. I just think it's just stupid. But I think we're always, you know, we've all got our ways, and I think when it's settled down, I think we'll get used to it. If we can't, then I think we're going to have to try something else. But I just hope they uh, realise how silly they've been. Anyway, Captain Cranky, I hope you enjoy that bike. I'm waiting for the first vid, mate, on that new bike. Oh, and the other one was, I watched this morning. Is it Skeggy? Is that your missus on a 100cc motorbike going up and down? That is nice to see, mate. Nice to see. I love seeing ladies on bikes. I wish more would. But uh, they don't. But it's nice to see. Anyway, I'm going to head my way back into Itchery's now. I think I'm going the right way. Struggling a little bit with this cruiser this morning. It is just so different to ride than, you know, my ZZR. It's a different technique. And uh, I don't think I've mastered it yet. I'm a bit wary on some of the corners and wet roads and whatever. I'm not sure, but uh, I suppose I will master it in the end. So you got like this one here, look, we. It seem they seem a little bit sort of low. You know, this is only 28 inches from the from the seat to the to the road, and I'm six foot bloody two, so I feel like a friggin' elephant, you know, sitting on a pimple. But uh, <laughs> I'll get used to it. Anyway, I'm just rambling on here. I'm going back to its reach. Everybody have safe riding, and uh, that's all I'm going to say today. Nice to be back, Suffolk Andy.